Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Our Father, we thank you for the help <coughs> which you have sent to us from the beginning of this meeting. You have spoken to us in various ways. The sound of the trumpet is so clear. None of us will go home wondering what to do. You have spoken in various ways. Lord, we have come to the second part of our seminar on discipleship. We want to look at the practical lives that you have helped in discipleship so that you will help us to learn from these lives and also take a step to become disciples and disciples. Thank you for hearing us, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. <clears throat> the, we have gone through our Bible studies for the past three days. And <clears throat> the Bible study was on the principles of disciple making. And the, we saw how uh, God helped lives. We saw the the discipleship relationship between Moses and Joshua in the Old Testament and also saw the discipleship relationship between Paul and Timothy in the New Testament. Uh, Moses and Joshua are gone to heaven. Uh, Paul and Timothy have also gone to heaven. Uh, God was only using them to show us what took place in that time. And now is our turn. And God is again challenging us over this matter of discipleship. And this afternoon, before we break into our groups, we would like to bring out two lives, two clergymen that God have helped this way for them to give us their personal testimonies and their own practice of discipleship. Uh, when they came in to eat, how God helped them and where they are now. So, permit me to call first on our brother, our Reverend Dr. Benga Odebri, to just come to the stage and take his place. And uh, closely following him is our brother, Venerable Professor uh, Pick Onwoche, also who has experienced discipleship. So we are going to be hearing from them. As I earlier said, they are going to give us their own practical experience you know, of their discipleship. Uh, when they came into discipleship, what has been their experience and what discipleship has led them into, even up to now. So I would like to begin with our brother, uh, Reverend Benga, who will now share with us his own discipleship experience. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Um, I want to say thanks to God for this opportunity to come and re relate what has been my own experience on this journey. I may be forced to say that I've come under discipleship of our Father in the Lord uh, in the person of Brother Bilea Conning. I will make it almost like a story of the journey that I've had to this point. I got in contact with uh, my disciple very long ago. I was still then an undergraduate in the university. I schooled at Ife. At that point, I happened to be the zona coordinator of NIFES. That time, Western Zone. We had a conference. I never knew him ahead. But the traveling secretary, I think, or whoever, I don't know how, that he was suggested to be the speaker for that conference. And he came. I can't remember. I think it was just one message that I remember that he took. But till date, I've never forgotten that message. It was Jonah. The issue of Jonah was the message. And I've never heard a word like that. I just was wondering, who is this person uh, that spoke in this manner? But you know, I had the privilege being the Zona coordinator. I remember he needed to cancel a lady. And I followed him to the university quarters. Um, somehow, that's just the measure of what interaction we had that space of time. And it closed. I was talking of Ife. He was in this area. It's such a wide uh, distance apart. But I think God, what I think, I want to register that. I don't think he lost memory of me from that day. I didn't know anything in discipleship. I wasn't thinking anything in discipleship. And uh, I, just, well, I just know that I saw one man of God that I think is worthy of emulation. After that, we, I think I, I finished from school, came back to my base then, which was Elori, and coincidentally, there was a meeting. I'm, re, I'm trying to remember who organized that meeting, but it's not my denomination. I think it was one either missions conference, and again, it was the speaker. Oh, I was glad to have that. I caught some of further opportunities away. And I think from that, my own assembly then, which was also where our theological college uh, is based, got interested in having him to come. And that was how he was invited to take a meeting with us. And that opportunity also presented itself for me to be able to have a little bit of interaction. We are not talking discipleship. We just, I just know that this is a person I love, uh, and I suspect he loves me. I, it's a suspicion. Right? Because I, I think he noted me also. Uh, maybe God signaling it in the heart. And we went on just occasional interaction as such. Then I went into theological college in preparation for taking up pastoral ministry. He got to know that and he gave me counsel. Even then. Maybe I should say this. At a point, I almost felt that why didn't he ask me to leave the school and just come to Boko? I felt he should have just told me that time to just leave school and come over uh, eventually. But I think God's help in the heart. I went through that program and I was about, by the time I was finishing, we were about planting a church in the Lorry Den. And I've said we have gotten to know him in the, in the setting, in the denomination. He was again invited to take a whole week long program that will culminate at the first service of that congregation. And so he came in for that meeting all through the week. 
And the first Sunday, which was sometimes in 1993 now, it was to, it, it had, we had it first service. And till today, anybody in the service that time will still tell you that message. They will, if we want to talk about it, we will say Iroko tree, and veg, Iroko Christian and vegetable Christian. That was the emphasis of that message. But it may sound ordinary to the hearers then. But I was very, very particularly instructed by that message, seeing it as what is becoming the marching order, the, the mandate that God was giving to the leadership of that assembly. As I then, I wasn't the leader. I was just only involved. That was March, sometimes 1993. 18 months after, I took over, in fact, the first pastoral leadership of that assembly in a full sense. I was involved all along, but not as the person. There was no pastor per se for the assembly. We were just running it as a team. So I took up the responsibility, and it was at that point that I think we want to begin to talk about very conscious establishment of a relationship. I remember I... It was the day, in fact, I don't think there was email. It was longhand letter. I had to write a letter and posted it. The summary that I can remember in the letter was that, uh, I would please would love to inform you now that I, I mean, formally inform you that I am now the pastor of this assembly. And I made reference to that message. And I said that that is what I feel God is having us to do or giving me as a responsibility to do in that place, to raise men that will be able to stand solid and strong against tides, against winds, against whatsoever. And since then, that has been our pursuit as a congregation. So I wrote that. I did not mention that. So please. But you know, I wrote it with the mind that so that it can, it can know. And uh, But my heart was that so that he can be my supervisor. The word discipleship wasn't even yet very well registered in my own heart. That he can be somebody I can relate with and say, oh, this is what is going on, this is how we are going on, and all that. Especially knowing that this is by whom God has given us that, so to say, commandment. Then we've, opportunities of meeting continued. And then I remember that we now had a space at a time to sit down together. We talked about discipleship in that time. And I now said, sir, that is the reason why I wrote that letter. That indeed, when I didn't hear any, you didn't reply my letter, you didn't reply that letter, but we've talked about it. I had thoughts in my heart because I didn't get a reply directly. Thinking to, maybe I will need to look elsewhere for what I think I needed. And, uh, but that day when we were talking, I even mentioned somebody. I said maybe I thought I should maybe relate with this person. More so for proximity. But he cancelled no. Because I think in his heart, he also was saying God. Saying don't leave this boy alone. Uh, so, we, in a way, I can say, I can't remember date now, but it's around that time, 93 to 95. I can't remember exactly when it could have fallen into. Uh, that, that relationship, formally or officially, if there's anything like that, or very consciously, I think that would be more appropriate, commenced. And I feel that the way we have related uh, was, if I remember you said that we have very many meetings. That gives us opportunity of being together. I should take advantage of them. We also will have opportunities of being together apart from the meetings that we should seek how God will help us to engage all of those ones. Uh, that made me very much available to very many meetings. Um, the, when we have space, we sit together, talk. Many a times they were not long. But sincerely, I can tell you that even if that interaction is just 10 minutes, 
it can serve to me as a tonic to carry me for one year. I don't know exactly how to say it beyond that. Uh, I've not, I've not, I don't think, apart from when we travel together, and I've had that opportunity also, that we have traveled together to places, maybe he has meetings, and I followed, and sit in the meeting, do whatever is possible, just round about. And I remember that there was one meeting we had at Oshobo, and I thought there were other senior disciples, if I would put that, that should gain the proximity that I gained that, that, that journey. You know, we slept inside one room. That looks to me very, very allowed. Uh, we stayed together in one room. And if I will, I don't know if he's here. Because I think Rajari was around that time. I thought he should have been inside the room with him. But I'm sure it was a deliberate intent. And that one of the nights, there was a meeting all through, far into the night with some people in the house. And there was going to be a preaching very early in the morning. You know, we slept together. I was, I don't want to say I was, I was, I was sneaking, peeping underneath. Because I wanted to see what will happen. This is a person that has labored all the day. He has labored in the night. And we slept. We slept together. And if I was pitying him, that God, how will this man be able to bring your thought at this meeting? Sincerely, that was the day I started. I stopped pitying, pitying him. I, I said, I will never again pity this man. Because it was too amazing to me. Sure, we woke up. He woke up, had a time before the presence of God. But I thought that time with God was too small. Compared to what was ahead. I don't know when he woke. I didn't time it. But I felt that it was too short a space. And he, it was God's gracious manifestation at that meeting. So we had that opportunity, especially following him. I don't know if I should say, but I, I, I have begged that he should not assume that I don't need that following any longer. Uh, because I think I mentioned it a few weeks away from here. Uh, because as we went on in this, I remained in the denomination. Indeed, the denomination was thinking I will move. I gave some information to some people in leadership not too long ago, maybe about three, four weeks back. And some of them said they thought I will have moved very many years back. When some people relate with, with him, I say, you, it's because you don't understand what God has given him to do. That's why you think the way you think many times. And so we have that space of moving on together especially by meetings and it has been a great source maybe one thing i want to mention when we talk about seeing to learn earlier in the church walk i remember that we sought to have him take a meeting with us that meeting centered on the topic prosperity and then uh, when we had the meeting it was in a learning for something different. In fact, I wasn't the one who initiated it. It was somebody in charge of our seminar that said, our brother is around. Let's seize the opportunity. I said, go ahead if you can, because I didn't believe we would be able to make it. So I pushed them. And lo and behold, that professor succeeded in having him to take just about two, three days of meeting. And very, very rich time before God's presence. And now after the meeting, I now packaged envelope, you know, customarily honorarium. And I said, sir, I remember, I, I can remember to a date where I stood in the church compound and I presented the envelope to him alone, the two of us. And then he said, no, no. I said, no, I was sent. I wasn't sent. It was my decision. I said, no, I can't it's touch. I was sent to do this. He said, no. He said, I should please tell the elders. He said he was in Elon. He wasn't here for this meeting. So there was no need. I've never in life saw somebody give him money. And then he says, no. It's not necessary. 
There is no way I can express what that thing did in my life. There is no way. Apart from recommending him far higher in my heart, it, it, it damaged quite a number of things that needed to be damaged in my own heart. And I, I, I became also a helped man when it comes to money. Such that when somebody, if I feel this is not a thing to be taken, it became very, very easy and natural. All because somebody I gave money to saw that. I'm sure maybe that's the way God wanted him to use that to impact my own life that time. And he said no to it. It reorientated me absolutely and totally. Uh, I, I saw that this is a way to go. And maybe I should say just two more one th I mean, two things before I stop. I could not say that I had approval all over places. I have very many people that say, what are you doing? Many that feel that, that this is foolishness. Even though I was relatively young, they thought I had a measure of grace. If I remember when I wrote a letter to one of my friends who were, who were, in, who were in the university together then, that I am going to, into the ministry now and I'm now taking theological training. One response of that person to me then was that, what are you doing in theological school? He said, you have enough for ministry. That I should forget about theological college and go. I mean, that is even somebody that was students together. And the people also, even in the seminary, they felt that, no, this one is... Is, 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 to a, is a cooked person. That's, the, that's their understanding and perception. So to feel that you are going to, what are you doing? Was the kind of the question. As if it was unnecessary for me. But honestly, not because I'm just wanting to talk. I know very certainly that if God has not given that help to my own life, I will have swapped I would have been somewhere else today. When I say somewhere else, maybe I may not even have left the denomination. I could have. But honestly, my focus, my emphasis, my direction would have been something totally different. Maybe that's something I think I should register with us. But secondly, whereas in the church, there is an enjoyment of the little, little grace that we are picking as we followed. I also noted that there are, also, there are also resistance. There were oppositions. There were, there were even castigations. But you know, part of the package is learning how to drink all of this together. And it could have even said to be slowing down some few things. And in the denomination today, I have moved a little. Where there could have been opposition, the mercy of God made the grace more evident. Presently, I'm the vice president of our denomination. I, I, it's not a thing that I really sought, maybe even desired. Indeed, the time they were making that decision, I was far, far away. And when they called and said, please, this is what we are pleading for you to be, I said... If somebody said they should call him because he may refuse and say he's not taking it. But I think God approved it in my heart and it was a marvelous approval that I think he did. Just to say that even though I was, how would I call it? I was pouring water. I was a servant. I didn't see that pegging me down. Even in the denomination where I belonged. It has given recommendation Beyond the denomination. I happen to be a denominational person in court, if you say. But I think in the whole of the city, they all know that there is no, no, no line that can't be crossed when it comes to relationship, when it comes to being able to fellowship with congregations, either to minister or just to be part of it. And I also will want to say that by the reason of this, Sincerely, I have picked grace. Uh, I have picked grace for ministry. There was a time, I've not said this in, past, in private, but I was saying that 
some of the things that affected me greatly were their attitude at song. I don't think we are singing enough again, isn't it? We could sing for 30 minutes. And those songs were sufficient sermons. With great passion, I learned passion. When it comes to prayer, I learned prayer. I can't say I learned preaching, but I had the concrete word of God. I learned even how to also go and seek God in my own privacy. I learned relationship. I don't think I usually raise questions, and thank God that our study says we should not be talking too much. But honestly, I open my eyes very, very wide at every opportunity that we are together. And there is no way I could have been what I am this day if not for this. I suspect that I will have stumbled in quite a number of places. God has given help and he has given opportunity. He, he opened the door and I think it's by himself that he pushed me to go inside it. So I just want to say that honestly, what is being said is beyond theory. Uh, what is being said is a concrete, solid experience. Indeed, the only way I perceive God can have us made to be what exactly he desires that we must be. Again, I want to say, I give thanks to God for the privilege of making this little expression. And can I publicly again say, thank you very much, sir and mommy, for making yourself available to us. Let me tell you what my wife said when I was telling him when I started this. He said, you should have told me very quickly so that she would have run after her sister Shadi very closely too. It's not yet late, isn't it? One thing we learned today is that when you're here, then you are still young. Uh, so my wife, if you are listening where you are seated, even if it is today, you are still young. Uh, and I trust that the yoke will not break the neck. It only make the life. Thank you very much. Just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Now, I want to ask him one question. Now, when you started, you, you came into this discipleship relationship. You just began in ministry. Now that you are the vice president of UMCA, are you still in this discipleship relationship or you have abandoned it? That's why I said that I even made appeal that, sir, that I am here where I am now does not stop me from following you. And I'm praying that I will have another opportunity very shortly. I'm, I'm making a public uh, expression, sir. I, I, because it hasn't stopped. I think we were here last, I was here last, maybe in October. There was a cogent issue in my life. And my wife, we needed to go and still corner him. To say, sir, this is where we are thinking we are getting to. I can't take major step outside the knowledge. I can't, I can't come to a point and I feel that now I'm an independent person. Vice president, even if there is anything beyond president, it does not graduate me away from this matter. Uh, I remain till when the Lord will say, it is over. Praise the Lord. We thank our brother for the sharing with us his experience in discipleship. As we told you earlier, we want to share these experiences for us to note that it didn't stop with Moses and Joshua. It didn't stop with Paul and Timothy. It didn't stop with Elijah and Elisha and several others. And God is still because it is God's project. We saw that right from the Old Testament there was discipleship. So it's not a new doctrine. It's not an invention by Peace House. It is a biblical doctrine that Christ himself has shown us the way. And that is the only thing he commanded us to do. 
you know, to go and make disciples of all nations. So discipleship is still active today if you are interested. And no matter the position you are occupying, does not stop you from being helped. You hear of his testimony. Uh, several things he needed to learn. He has never seen a man reject money. And that is a common experience with many of us who have been following. And there are many issues that God needed to help his life to grow properly, which he's sharing with us. And even at this stage, he has not abandoned his discipleship. Please, I would like you to note that, you know, there are issues in your life that only another can help you to, to settle them. And it is only when you are following. You know, yesterday when we were listening to our sister present the tips for making disciples, we saw that one of the things we need to, to, to note is uh, before you can make any disciple, you must be a life that is followable. We saw the testimony of John, who touched, who saw it, didn't just hear about it, and their lives were changed, and we're all beneficiaries of what Jesus did in their lives. So we're going to take our next, uh, our brother, the Venerable Professor Peak, who will also share with us his own discipleship experience in the next 15 minutes. Story, story. Yeah, that's how you normally begin a story, isn't it? <laughs> it was about 33 or 32 years ago. We were on campus and um, we invited um, somebody to take, I think it was uh, um, the sent forth of the graduating brethren then in the university. And then this man came, looking very ordinary. Didn't, to me, he didn't look like a man of God. It was too, too simple. And then he refused to be put in any guest house. We were in the student's hostel and he insisted on staying in the student's hostel in the room of one of our brothers. What kind of a man of God is this? Now we stay in the student's hostel and I hope you know that um, the bathroom is not one one. It's you understand. There were many inconveniences, and this man stayed there. And yet, when it was time to preach, um, actually, some of us were asking if we were we were in, we were in, we were already in fellowship. We were asking if we were if we were born again. I mean, have you ever read the Bible before? That was a kind of impact. But you know, that left. Until 1988, the then um, Gongola State, old Gongola, Gongola State Christian Coppers Fellowship uh, invited me for their state conference. And then I got there. I had known him, but he hadn't known me. Of course, just from the congregation. And he was the main speaker. And it was to come up immediately after me. And I sang some songs. No, I think it was just one particular song. And it was like there was a visitation. And he quickly came up. He didn't, want, he didn't wait to be introduced. And he said, Brethren, honestly, I don't know this brother before. I don't know him. I don't know this young man before. But that this is what God is saying. That God wants to go far with him. And that the brethren should stand up and tell God not to lose me. And that they should tell God that the body of Christ does not want to lose me. It was serious. For about for over 30 minutes, going to an hour, he couldn't start preaching. It was a prayer meeting for me. Now I say that very clearly because uh, what he saw then, I didn't see. And probably... Just probably, I'm still in the kingdom today because of the investment of prayer that was made on me then. 
Now that began a journey. Because of that, there were no emails. He will write a letter with his hand, long hand. And I will read, I will reply. That's how we began to, we began the journey of discipleship. It was not called discipleship. That word, I don't think it was, it was, uh, and I must say that I didn't come to learn a walk. I came to learn a life. I saw a life. But you see, I was still reserved. I was still reserved. Um, when he's going to preach anywhere around, he will uh, find a way of letting me know. I'll come around. And sometimes, if he's around just when he finishes preaching, like sometimes he comes to take meetings in Ganarop. We will go to Ganarop together and sleep over. And then he was sharing all of these things of, uh, you know, uh, dying to self, living a crucified life. And he didn't know that when he finishes talking, he said, can this thing walk? Does he walk? I think one day I, I summoned up enough courage. I remember it was in Ganarop after dinner. And I said, these things you're talking about, does it work? He said, yes, it works. So I decided to do something. Don't be troublesome like me as a disciple. I appeared in his house in Amka unannounced. He didn't know I was coming. I wanted to find out this thing that this man teaches on stage. <laughs> Does he follow him home? You know, I got home. He wasn't around. He had traveled to go and preach. It was mommy I met. The children were very small. And as she was welcoming me and all of that, my eye was like this. I was checking everything. The way she talks. The way she welcomed me. The way she presented anything. I checked when the children were playing. Jola was still very small. And anything, the correction, the people who were living with them, I examined everything. And I concluded that what this man preaches on stage follows him home. From that day, I released my heart and released myself. I said, I can learn from this man. Now, very critical because it was to influence my own decisions even when I got married. I can release my wife to just come and stay. Just, 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 just stay. And she has the liberty to report me to my parents. And when I say dad or mom, I am not pretending. It is because there is something. And I am not, I'm not being cosmetic. I am real for them to see and make corrections where necessary. I'll be talking about the benefit later on. But I, I want to say that I am the beneficiary of what experience I've been through. In discipleship. Perhaps some of the, the things people see today and they want to touch is because the word became flesh in somebody else. It's, it's, it's a very different thing. It's not just knowing the Bible, but seeing the Bible at work. Bro, Debbie has talked about rejecting money. And I, I, of course, we would never have been able to do that kind of a thing when it became necessary, except that we saw it. So when, for example, in 2000, I think it was 2000 and, was it 2005 or 2006, I had opportunity to uh, preach first 2000 and, 2004 and then 2005, because that happened twice, but I would, uh, or more than twice, but I think I'll talk about one. Uh, I preached in a church. And then a woman gave her life to Christ. She actually happens to be a Nigerian. This was in the state of Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin. 
And I spent about one month. I took other meetings, but I was lodged in the pastor's place. So the whole month I spent there, she was coming every like twice a week, and I was following her up. The last session I had with her, she brought her children and said she wanted for me to pray for the children before leaving. And after that, she, after I prayed and then we've talked, she brought, she brought an envelope. And I said, what is that? She said, it's a card. So I took it and I said, I hope it's just a card. True to my suspicion, when I opened it in the middle of the card, she stuffed in some dollars. So I removed the notes and I said, take this card, I will take. This one, I will not take. And she said, why? And you know, I, it just came naturally. Some of the things he says in passing. Like I said, I learn more by observing. They are not a visual aid for me. And I just, it just came naturally. I'm sure if I say it, he can recognize his own words in what I said. And I didn't think about it. I didn't even know it was there. I simply said, I cannot start eating from your life when Jesus has not started eating from your life. And that's the kind of thing he would tell me privately. I said, it's not money. The pay I want is these principles I have taught you. If I come next summer, you're still in Christ and you're living well. I come in two years' time, you're still... He said, maybe then, when you have understood what ministry is all about, when you have understood giving, when you have understood how to hear from God and know whether it was God who is asking you to give, maybe then, but now, no. I remember the pastor looked at me later, you know, because she told him. He came and met me, he said, Brother Pig, a Nigerian preacher rejecting dollar? But it was nothing for us. And she said to me, do you know how much I have spent on Nigerian preachers? And none of them has helped me like you have. Thank God, up to 10 years later, she's still following the Lord. That's the kind of pay. I have been a beneficiary of this relationship. And then I release my wife to come and stay. I am a beneficiary of it. And I'll give a testimony on behalf of my wife. A friend of mine who used to come, he comes to our house. Incidentally, he's going to be with the Lord today. Um, every time he's telling me, you see, you see, you see, you see your wife now, you see sister, you see, you, you see now, my wife, my wife. So he kept complaining like that. And one day I said, bro, keep quiet. I said, no woman was born virtuous. Every virtuous woman was made. As I've told you about, you have followed me to Boko. Have you ever brought your wife? The things you hear, your wife didn't hear. And you go back home and you expect her to behave according to what you heard, which she didn't hear. I said, do you know the investments? Do you know there were times I would drive from Joss in one day I said, go. I will stay with the children. They were small. I will drive from Joss, more than five hours, come and drop her in Boko and drive back to stay with the children. Why she stays is not necessarily for a meeting. But there's an impartation. Sometimes it's for a meeting. Sometimes it's not. Maybe just women's meeting and I will ensure she comes. I said, I am a beneficiary of those investments. Maybe if our past didn't cross, perhaps I would have had five children from three mothers today. But I saw something. And I also saw a woman I can call a mother that will invest, that can invest in my own wife. I'm a beneficiary. Now, excuse me. I don't know. Okay, let me talk about two more benefits. I don't know how much time I have. But because when I keep saying that it is for my own benefit, discipleship has benefited me more than them. And it is not only in talking Bible. Some people have wondered, how come that you became a professor so well to them, 
very early. It was because somebody will also sit me down and say, yes, we are learning Bible. Yes, we are serving God. But the university is also a platform to demonstrate Christ. You must not beg for promotion. So in spite of how difficult it is, we have to research and write. And those counsels and insistence that this is what you must do paid off. I remember when I was assessed as associate professor, what they call reader. The message that was sent back to me after they met, they told the dean to inform me to remove some papers that I had more than enough to remove some so that you can go with this one then so that in three years time you can bring these ones and just make up for the full this thing i laughed i said leave it because as at that time they were talking two more had come out now it's not because ordinarily i would have but somebody was insisting and i remember that in 2003 i was going for an international conference in calvin college grand rapids michigan and it, it was a very a very serious meeting. I was the only person directly from the African soil. There were two Africans there. One Ghanaian and myself. But the Ghanaian lives in the US there. And I simply just to say to my disciple, this is it, this is it, I'm going. He made one statement. He said, Pig, when you get there, don't be timid. There's something in you. Be bold to bring it out. <gasps> this was an academic conference. And I went. Yes, my father told me not to be timid. So I got there. When I saw all the professor of the medical, this professor of psychology, professor of this, I was not a professor then. I was just one uh, useless doctor, so, so, so. But I was bold. I said, my father told me not to be timid. There's something. So when those Americans finish speaking through their nose, I will bring out my own. Because I know I have to come back and report. If you ask me how did the conference go, what I was, I was Dundee United. I just went there. They talked. They said, hey, it was okay. No. I was bold to make contributions. So much so that at, towards, by the middle of the conference, I remember Professor Sawyer, every time everybody has finished talking and I have not spoken, she will say, you gotta let him speak. You gotta let him speak. Uh, he has a way of. Uh, of right, right. He has not spoken. He has not spoken. I said, "What have I done now? Do you know that I finished that conference and came back? They wrote a letter to the vice chancellor of University of Jos, commending my participation in that conference. It was copied to my dean, and that's how I got to know because my, the dean was so excited talking about it. A few months later, they sent me a message inviting me back." for the conference in the summer of 2004 not to just participate but to chair the conference. Now so because we're talking about it now he is not he is not a, of course he was a lecturer but you could see counsel and the way it helped me to become what I am. Time will fill me to talk about my ordination. I will not have come this way. <laughs> but that's, that's a, a whole story. But just to say to you, friends, that you are missing if you're not being discipled. I end with this story. I went to fix my car one day. And my panel beater, who was working for me, were talking. And my car was jacked up. And his boy knew what to do. I think they were to weld the exhaust. He carried the things to be welded and went under. And the man turned from me and saw him and was so angry. I think he was looking for blah and, and and pursued the boy out. I said, Sam, come. He said, no. I don't they want this boy. How you go enter on that motor? He said, Jack, they fail. Now, that boy knows how to weld. He knows what to do to an exhaust. But 
he has not had his senses exercised like the bible says he is not as experienced to know that sometimes jack can fail you may listen to john 3 16 together but the interpretation will be different from your disciple praise the lord praise the lord now two things two things that are common to their testimonies first discipleship as a definite entry point <clears throat> did you notice that with their testimony did you notice that there was a definite entry point yes and you know, some of us we say well we are this person's disciple but there is no record to show that this is the time you came into discipleship and two of them have given their testimonies about Brother Bila Akoni but the person God may be leading you to to help your life may not necessarily be Brad Bilakoni. Is that true or false? It may be somebody else that God has also helped and God is leading you to that life to help your life. You must take a definite step to enter into that relationship so that the person we know that this life have submitted to me. Now, the second thing is their own experiences. From what our brother Peak, the professor, is telling us, maybe, well, maybe let me ask you, were you planning to, to become a professor, even though you were in the academics, but was that on your mind? I probably would have left lecturing if I was not in discipleship. Um, once you see the grace of God beginning to break forth, because of immaturity, you've, you've just seen some drops. You know, people will be clamoring around you and say, what are you doing? It's not, if you're not careful, you know, you can, you can just jump out. But I had a father who is saying, eh, uh, is an introduction. This is not where we are going yet. So, and I don't know, I don't know when he will think that I've, I've reached anything now. But because even where I am now, I say, hey, you know, the, it was, um, was it a few months ago? Was it in January or December? He was praying for me and was saying to God, you know, uh, he's about to enter the purpose for which he was. So I said, ah, so I have not even, I have not entered yet. Somebody is a venerable in the Anglican communion. He's a professor. But he's just about to. Do you know why? His disciple is seeing what he has not seen. And that is one of the benefits of discipleship. God may go ahead to tell your disciple where you are going. But you, God may not tell you. And if you are an obedient disciple who has submitted today, thank God for the what God showed us in our Bible studies. The right attitude a disciple must have before he can be discipled. If God has helped you to release yourself release your will and to submit under discipleship you will get the best out of your discipler now one of the benefits of discipleship again is why you may be cracking your chicken and you are sleeping and all of that you see your discipler is on his knees, even fasting for you. Do you know that? Asking God, why did you bring this young man to me? 
That is the labor of a discipler. So, I want to encourage us that if you are here and you have never experienced discipleship, please, no matter your height, no matter how you think, where you think you have reached, please, I beseech you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, cry to God to, to make you a disciple and humble yourself and submit because even from what two of them have said, there is something, something greater <clears throat> ahead of them that they have not seen. There is something God wants to bring them into. And there are several of you sitting here, by the grace of God, there is something God wants to bring you into. It's not an ambition. You are not fighting for it. You are not even looking for it. But when you are properly made and God has seen that this life has submitted and I'm working on him through a human hand, God is the one to open the door for you. I was telling those in our Bible study group yesterday that look, if you enter into discipleship properly and God is working on your life, you don't need to lobby even the bishop. You don't need to beg anybody. You don't need to do anything. It is God himself that will make a way for you. Where there is no way. He will open a door where there is no door. Every body will bite their fingers and say, how? Even you, you say, I don't know. And from what God is telling us in this meeting about discipleship, the people under us, they have an inheritance with God. They have a destiny with God. If we ourselves sitting here have not submitted to discipleship to be made, the truth is those congregants are very, very unfortunate. They will die without entering into their possessions, into their inheritance because discipleship is the only means by which God will bring any man or woman into their inheritance. There is no other way. And your inheritance may be beyond even what you are doing. So, please, I beseech you that you pray. Maybe as the Bible study was going on, the practical tips were going on, some of you were wondering in your heart and saying, what do they mean? How can I go and submit under another for discipleship? Please, all of that, God has dealt with this in this meeting. As God has given us the what it takes to live the crucified life. So before we enter into our we go into our groups, I would like us to pray. Please can we pray? Our brothers have shared their practical experiences in discipleship. And by the grace of God, each of you have seen that they are doing well. They are doing well. You can't just push them aside and say, where are they? No, they are doing well. It's not just these two brothers. There are several others that if you bring them up, they will give you the same testimony. And they will share with you the benefits of discipleship. Your discipler knows how to encourage you to be bold anywhere. Please can we pray and say, Lord, this matter is not something to just push aside. Lord, cause me to enter into it. Not just you, even your wife. Our two brothers are sharing with us, even their own wives. Our brother say he brings a wife from just drop her here and he goes back. Please, sister, also pray. Don't say I have children. I have this. No, God will make a way for you. Whatever the devil is ministering to any of us and saying, How can you 
how can you belittle yourself like that please stay Lord even as the cross has dealt with my flesh in this meeting I'm going out of this place tomorrow not to procrastinate not to say next month, next year but I will deliberately go and submit to someone God is leading me please can you pray let's plead with the Lord to help us you must be a disciple yourself if you are going to help disciple others our brothers have their own experiences they are now qualified even to help another life in Jesus name we have prayed so father we thank you so much for bringing your children to share with us their various experiences in our followership Lord you gave us biblical examples and now you are giving us examples that are right here with us who have experienced this and you have given them the liberty to share this experience with us you are doing everything possible to convince us that this is the way Lord we plead with you may none of us here be a disappointment to you each of us oh God we go in obedience and do this that you are asking us to do because it is one thing that is necessary Holy Spirit we pray that you will go with us beyond this meeting even as we go to our various places you will follow us over this matter because there are great things you have for each of us let the devil not cheat over any of us thinking that we have arrived we have settled father we will be cheating ourselves as we go into our various groups to discuss this one thing father we ask you to help us we ask that as we go back we are going to bring this to our people even as we ourselves submit in discipleship thank you for hearing us you will help us to be effective disciples ourselves for we have prayed in jesus name amen amen Living Seed Media brings